Flowcharts are a fun and visual way of representing a particular algorithm. You can use them uh, to solve algorithms as well if you get algorithm questions, but you need to know the shape. So let's just go through them uh, quickly because each shape is different and important. You have to get it right. Our first one is a parallelogram. We use a parallelogram anytime we have any sort of input and output. One tip I would give you uh, when you're doing flowcharts is do what I'm doing here. Uh, do the text in the middle first and draw the shape around it, otherwise you inevitably get the wrong size. Uh, next shape is a rectangle that is used for processes. That's typically things like maths and stuff like that. If you're adding things together or dividing them, but it can be used for other things as well. So I'll put process in there. And uh, next one, if we're starting or stopping a flow chart uh, or a subroutine, which you'll see in a moment, then we need to use this kind of oval shape. It can, it can just be like a normal oval uh, or it can just be sort of like a box of rounded ends like that one. Uh, so that is when we're starting and stopping. The next two are a bit trickier. So every time you have some sort of decision that you need to make, then that is represented with a diamond. That's kind of a special kind of box because uh, it will have one input and two outputs, but you'll see how that works in a moment. So then one going in there and then two coming out here. And then the last one we need to be aware of um, is this one here, which you don't see too often, um, but it is used for subroutines, which lets you break up a flow chart into several smaller flow charts. And again, we'll show you how that works. Um, as an example, I said subroutines, subprocessors. So it's called subprocessors. Right then, let's uh, let's have an example algorithm then, and then we'll put together a flow chart for it. We're gonna do something really simple. So write an algorithm that gets two numbers from the user, adds them together, and outputs the result. Let's pretend we're trying to solve that. Okay, so let's work through this one. Um, this is what you need to do. So you can start with your usual start and stop shape. Uh, I'm just gonna do a, a free, freehand sort of oval. That is fine if you do that. Uh, it doesn't have to have straight edges. Then we're gonna go straight into getting the uh, inputs from the user. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You could arguably do this in one box. So you could have one box saying input num1 uh, and num2, but it makes it really nice and clear um, if you just separate these out. Key thing here is that you can't get away without using variables for flowcharts. That's a common mistake that I see. So I'm saying here input num1 input num2 i'm being specific all right and then i need to add them together so that's a simple process box uh, and i do that like a line of code so result equals num1 plus num2 i need to output the result so i'm going to do this uh, it has to be i'm going to use the word output i'm going to output use the word result and again and that's like a variable isn't it because i've created a variable here result equals num1 plus num2 so i'm making it really clear that's how that's all matching up see num1's there num2 there it's all matching up, all very clear where my data is coming from. Um, that is an output, so that has to be that shape. And then I'm finishing because it's a nice, simple algorithm. If you do that and, and you had a nice, uh, nice, easy question, like I did two numbers together, then this flowchart will be enough to get you like full marks in the question. But what I want to do is show you what not to do because I see quite a few students falling into this trap. I see some students do this. They go start and then they'll have one book box here saying get two numbers. They might use the right shape. They'll have maybe a process box here saying add them together. And then assuming again, we're doing the right shapes, we'll have one more box saying output result. Okay, that's what not to do. Don't do that. And the reason why is because you're not being specific enough. You're not showing the flow of data. You're not showing variables. You're just sort of repeating the question um, in diagram form. So that won't get much marks, if any at all. Okay, what I'm gonna do is do a slightly different algorithm now. I'll move over here. Uh, let's try this. Okay, so write an algorithm that asks for a number. If it's greater than 10, subtract five, uh, output the result in all cases. All right, so we'd start off that algorithm just as we would do uh, with the previous one, uh, which is your start and stop box. We'd have some input and we'd definitely give that like a variable name. Again, just to remind, it's handy to, uh, to write it first and then do the shape afterwards. Okay, we've got a decision now. So this bit here, if it is greater than 10, I need the decision for that. Don't ask my algorithm is gonna do one of two different things based on if that number is greater than 10. Here's the best way to do it. You just put in the condition that you would normally write uh, in pseudocode. So number uh, greater than 10, and then maybe put question mark at it I, after it. I would sort of recommend trying to Anything you put in a decision box should really have a question mark afterwards. It should be formed uh, as a question. That's gonna be a bit of a wonky diamond, but never mind. Um, and then I've got two lines off it. What's really important is that I label these lines, okay? 
So at the bottom, I'm going to say no. So when it's not greater than 10 and at the, over there, I'm going to say yes. You can swap these around. I've just decided to do it this way for this algorithm. Um, all right. So if the number's not greater than 10, then our job is quite simple, isn't it? It's just outputting the, the number uh, and then finishing our algorithm. OK, so that's nice and easy. What I'm going to do here when it's, when it's yes is use a subroutine. Now, arguably, this is a fairly simple algorithm. I shouldn't bother using a subprocess for it, but I just want to show you kind of how it works. You don't have to go into a subprocess from decision box. This is just for the purposes of this example. OK, so uh, if it is greater than 10, then I've been told to subtract um, 5 from it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call a subprocess here called subtract, and in brackets, I'm going to pass it. Um, number and that's going to be passed as a parameter. So have a look at the video all about subprocesses and stuff to try and get yeah, your head around parameters. But there will be an example of that here as well. Um, I need to do the correct shape box around it, which is a rectangle with a pair of tram lines around it. And then I know after my subroutine, I'm going to assume that's going to subtract five and output the result. And I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but after that, it's just going to go to the end of the algorithm anyway. Okay, so all that let's all that is left to do is for me now to do this this subtraction, okay, and knowing that I'm getting that number in there as well. So this is going to be like a separate flow chart now, okay? That's how we sort of treat it. Uh, and I'm going to have a subtract number there, um, and this time this is what is in my oval. It's not the word start. I'm making it clear that this is my subroutine called subtract. It's going to do something really simple. What's important to know is that the value which is put in here, so the value that we get in our flowchart here, is copied into here. So I can use number uh, now. That value has been copied there. Uh, and all I need to do is subtract 5 from it. And I still need to output the result of this one because I'm outputting the result here in my main algorithm, but I haven't done it uh, on this branch of that decision. And then I still go to a stop at the end there. OK, so how this would work is that you start here in your algorithm. Let's say I inputted the number 11. Is number greater than 11? Yes. So I'm going to go, go and end up here. Um, so I'm ending up here. Next thing that would happen is that I would actually end up up here, copying number here, uh, and then I'd go down to this box and this box, and then I would follow along afterwards. So that's how that works. It sort of inserts a flow chart um, at that point. You just need to be able to copy the, num the, the parameters across into your subprocess. That's as about as advanced as flow charts get. If you are familiar with all your inputs, outputs, um, and decisions that will be enough for the vast majority of flowcharts. It's just these subprocesses that subprocesses that I know some find tricky, so just have a bit of practice on that. But input and output process and decision are definitely the most important. If you found that video useful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.